Hello everybody and welcome to my channel and please subscribe and hit the like button. I appreciate it so much and God bless you and you are a blessing. Well the midterm elections are closer than they may seem. Within barely over four weeks Americans will head to the polls to determine which candidates they want to represent them in the House and the Senate. Republicans have been consistently favored to take back the House of Representatives next month. A huge factor in this boils down to positive GOP performances in districts that were either traditionally Democrat or swing areas. However, for a while, the Senate has been widely deemed as a toss-up, largely due to the neck-and-neck -neck elections playing out in different background, battleground states. Senator, still Senator Rick Scott, a Republican of Florida, is projecting that his party will pick up at least two extra Senate seats this next month, setting the record straight. While sitting down with Meet the Press, the center and former governor of Florida said at a minimum, after the midterms, GOP members will occupy 52 seats in the upper chamber. Mm, pardon me again. i got to quit drinking coffee, I think, before I do a video. Scott explained that it is largely due to the American people not accepting the radical Biden agenda. Meanwhile, this is the very agenda that Democrats have to defend as they campaign to be elected and re-elected into office. Despite saying that next month is likely to go well for the GOPs, Scott warned that the party shouldn't become complacent. He informed Meet the Press that Republicans still have much more work to do as these elections play out. Before his interview wrapped, the Republican Center likewise pointed out how the party put forward great candidates during the election cycle. More bad news for the Democrats. The remarks from Scott in interestingly, interestingly Enough mere statements from White House press secretary turned MSNBC commentator Jen Psyche. Oh, Psyche. I'm sorry, I did pronounce that wrong. I had to remember uh, one of the YouTubers and saying that he uh, liked Psyche or Saki, whatever that drink is. Yeah, <laughs> Saki. <laughs> oh, boy. Oh, Saki openly stated if the midterm elections ended up being a referendum on the Biden administration, then Republicans will win. I pray the Republicans will win. A statement like this from the president's former top spokesman is huge. Spokesperson is huge. Yeah. It also shows that even some Democrats see the writing on the wall. Saki isn't the only one. Though Representative Tim Ryan, Democrat Ohio's running for office this year, has stated to distance himself from Biden. Ryan, like many other members of his party, refused to endorse the current president for re-election. The Ohio Democrat was also one of the several party members who criticized Biden's student loan forgiveness program weeks ago. It's bad for Democrats when even members of their own party admit the president is not a non-starter and a liability ahead of the midterms. Well, I could say a lot, but I won't. I just hope and pray that the best win to help get us back on our feet. I don't know. I just heard a news uh, from one of the other subscribers, or not subscribers, one of the other channels, I'm sorry, and the news is not good coming from Russia. That president over there has just, I don't know, no words. I'm not sure. I understood at one time that he had cancer or has cancer and uh, I don't know if he wants to blow up everybody before his day comes if it's 
that bad of a cancer? I don't know, but I'll tell you what. It it downs you. It just makes you feel down. I was hoping for more positive attitudes coming. But that president from Russia just don't have them. He just don't care about nobody but himself. And even his people in Russia are trying to get out. To get away from him. Lord have mercy. Well, let's see what else I come up with. Oh, dear, dear. Let's try this one here. I, I'm even down on this one. <laughs> it just kind of brings the morales of us down, which we have to try to keep them up. No matter what the news says, we got to try to keep our morales up. Our positivity. Dear Trump, Trump's ramp rampage against McConnell getting widespread criticism. Now this was probably a week or so ago and I'm a little bit behind on getting the ones I wanted. Um, I'm coming down with a cold and fighting that and getting back in track again. On his Truth social website Donald Trump asked Mitch McConnell a lot of questions about supporting a bill that would fund the government for a while, all while adding trillions in debt to our nation. Trump asked if McConnell was supporting the various trillions of dollars worth of Democrat-sponsored bills without even having a chance to negotiate. He also claimed that the Senate Minority Leader hated Donald Trump, and he was doing it because he believed in the Green New Deal. He concluded his post by saying that both of these reasons are unacceptable and he urged McConnell to seek advice from his wife, Coco Chow. The former president criticized McConnell for acting out of spite for Trump as his relationship with the president is not strong enough to prevent him from doing so. However, by supporting the stopgap spending bill, he showed that he had abandoned his duty. The post, which was made on his true social website in a state of anger, drew criticism from both parties. Many of them noted that Trump went too far with his threats. Some also said the Republican Party was in a tragic period, tragic period because it was leading in the polls. Some Republicans also noted that the party did not need the Democrats to pick on again as both of them were only contributing to the division within the party. They claimed that the two politicians should get back to talking about their issues. Whatever happened, and I repeated this before in my video, whatever happened to working together on both parts and coming to agreements on both parts? Is there no give or take anymore about anything? Everybody's got good ideas. Everybody's got ideas that may not pass. But they can be worked out. Compromise. Oh. This gets me down. You know. In addition, the leadership fund of McConnell has been supporting various candidates. Including those who previously supported McConnell. Some of these candidates also said that they would like to replace McConnell as the leader of the party. Since McConnell did not respond to Trump's latest attack, it is highly unlikely that he will. The former president and his allies need to win in the upcoming elections to maintain the position within the Republican Party. But my goodness, come together. Talk things out. Oh, I tell you. That's what gets people so upset and the voters upset and depressed. And I heard one comment, or read one comment, I should say, uh, from a YouTuber. These people, and even presidents, acting like children. I mean, these decisions 
are important to the voters of this subject. You're working for us. They don't get that, do they? They keep working for whatever they think is right or wrong and fight over it like a bunch of children over a toy. We are not toys. We're people. Come together for us, Democrats and Republicans. <clears throat> I got to calm down. All right. Let me know what y'all think. I'm disgusted. I can't help it. And I know me, I'm not alone. I am not alone. I got to bring this down, move my camera over. Or I'll lose my camera. And let's go to the next subject here or the next video I have. The Georgia Senate race is heating up following the establishment media airing accused of accusations against Republican Senate candidate Herschel Walker. All the while, that same establishment media conveniently continued to ignore the domestic controversies swirling around Herschel's opponent, Senator Rap Rapiel Warnock, Democrat of Georgia. Walker appearing on Hannity Monday night, and that's H-A-N-N-I-T-Y, appeared on Hannity Monday night, reacting to a report from the Daily Beast, which talked to an anonymous woman who claimed that Walker not only encouraged her to abort their child in 2009, but paid for it. When the question on the show about whether he he knew who the woman was, he said, I have no idea, but it is flat out lie. And now you know how important this seat is. This seat is very important that they'll do anything to win this seat. Lie because they want to make it about everything else except what the true problems that we have in this country. Inflation, the border wide open, and crime. They don't want to talk about that so they're making up lies now because they need this georgia seat so i encourage anyone out there let's not let them take this seat he said previously announcing his intentions to sue the outlet for defamation of character defamation of character meanwhile walker's son christian was taken to social media dishing his father d-i-s-s-i-n-g dissing his father. You're not a family man when you left us to bang a bunch of women threatening to kill us and had us move over six times in six months running from your violence, the young man wrote. Walker responded by public, publicly stating, I love my son no matter what. Warnock, however, is no stranger to family controversy. Despite the corporate media's framing otherwise, perhaps most famously, Warnock found himself in the middle of a domestic dispute in 2020 after his now ex-wife, Ule, O-U-L-E-Y-E, Nadode, N-D-O-Y-E, Nadode, accused him of running over her foot with his car. Body cam footage of the authorities visit features Nadoidi telling police that her husband is a great actor. This man's running for United States Senate and all he cares about right now is his reputation, she said. I work at the mayor's office and this is a big problem. I've been trying to be very quiet about the way that he is for the sake of my kids and his reputation. She continued explaining that she has tried to keep the way that he acts under wraps for a long time. But today, he crossed the line. So that is what is going on here. And he's a great actor. He is a phenomenal at putting on a really good show, she added. According to reports, the dispute started over divorce paperwork amid his Senate bid against former Senator Kelly Lufer. 
Warnock was not charged in that particular incident and could be heard saying, I barely move. And all of a sudden, she's screaming that I ran over her foot. I don't believe it. But he admits right there, I barely moved. Would he have his car door open so he could watch if he ran over her foot? Hmm. My thoughts only. His family disputes do not end there, as his ex-wife took legal action over child custody, accusing her ex of being a willful contempt of their agreement. The Atlanta Georgia Constitution reported, The most recent filing involves a child custody arrangement finalized in April 2020, as he was waging a campaign for the U.S. Senate. Through the details are private, though the details are private, Often these arguments stipulate that one spouse cannot move children out of the state. In the court documents, she asked a judge to revisit the child support considerations because she plans to be a full-time student at Harvard University for two years. She claimed a substantial change of circumstances regarding the welfare of the children. After Warnock's victory, and she alleged in the filing that her ex-husband hasn't reversed her, for some child care costs that she incurred during time he scheduled to be with the kids. Specifically, the filing stated that Warnock failed to reimburse Nendode has left financially strapped, leaving the children in her care when she should be concentrating on work-related, school-related responsibilities. It added that any reimbursements she did receive were often accompanied with an extended questioning regarding the value of and need for the services provided. It remains unclear what impact the allegations against Walker will have on the race, but National Republicans are sticking by him and his fundraising is reportedly surging. Former President Donald Trump is perhaps the biggest figure to speak out in support of the Republican Senate, hopefully following the allegations, stating that Walker is being slandered and maligned by the fake news media and obviously the Democrats. Regional article, Raphael Warnock's ex-wife accused him of injuring her. He is a great actor. And that's BrittBart.com. Oh my goodness. And Trump has at least as many skeletons and probably more. But you're still pushing votes for him and his cronies. So why go after Warnock in this manner? I guess that's maybe racial. But he's still a person who does not represent Republicans and lies to get his way. Warnock deserves to be called out for his flaws. He's a crazy preacher that doesn't belong in the Senate. My, oh my, oh my. Well, folks, believe it or not, I'm caught up. And so now... I've got to do some searching and researching and some reading, and I'll be back. God bless you. Find my button here for the cam. <laughs> Bye. Or so long for now, because I'll be back. God bless.